In humans, we can use last names to denote relationships. So let's say that this family is named Smith. The name Smith denotes relationship, that those who share the name Smith are descended from a common ancestor. If one of the women changes her name when she marries, she is no longer a Smith. Thus, in biological terms, the word Smith includes some of the descendants of a common ancestor, but not all, since some are no longer included in the family Smith. In biological terms, this is known as a paraphyletic group, which includes some, but not all, of the descendants of a common ancestor. For example, do you consider yourself a fish? Since the first vertebrates were fish, they were not only the ancestors of the fish alive today, but the tetrapods alive today. If you do not consider yourself a fish, you are using the group fish as a paraphyletic group, which includes some of the descendants of the first fish, but not all. Do you consider yourself an amphibian? Since the first tetrapods were amphibians, all modern tetrapods would be their descendants. But if we do not consider reptiles, birds, mammals, and ourselves as amphibians, then the term amphibian includes some of the descendants of a common ancestor, but not all, and therefore represents a paraphyletic group. Do you consider yourself to be a reptile? Since the first amniotes were reptiles, then all modern amniotes, which would include mammals and birds, are their descendants. If you do not consider mammals and birds to be reptiles, then the term reptile is a paraphyletic group in your usage. It includes some, but not all, of the descendants of a common ancestor. Do you consider yourself an ape? Since the first members of the human family tree evolved from apes, then we are just as much descended from those ancestral apes as the apes alive today. If you do not consider yourself an ape, then you are using the term ape as a paraphyletic group, which includes some but not all of the descendants of the first apes.